focus on self-awareness to help manage your expectations. Welcome to the Good Karma Success Coach Podcast. My name is Melinda Van Fleet, and I'm a mindset success coach. My husband Ryan and I were laid off at the same time 10 years ago. We moved to the Florida Keys without jobs, not knowing anyone, hardly any money, and we never even been here. So all along, I have said that someday when we get our quote unquote shit together, we will help others because since then we've done a lot of self work and both built successful businesses. My intent is to be relatable and bring you tactical tips, tools, share my learnings and stories that can help inspire you or transform you wherever you are in your career or general life. I strongly believe that if I can do it, you can do it too. So what's stopping you? This podcast is a part two on expectations. It's something that I really feel we all struggle with, myself included. My hand is raised very high. And I had received a lot of really positive feedback on episode 29, which is tips on how to manage expectations. And even as I was doing that podcast, I just really had a feeling that it would be um, just a part one, that as life goes on and time goes on, I really felt that there's probably more to say about this topic. And if you listen to my podcast, one thing to note that's just a little different than some of the other podcasts, not all of them, but some, is I do my podcast pretty much right before I release it. I don't batch. And I really just speak with what I'm being called to speak, what kind comes top of mind So sometimes what I say isn't perfect (laughs) because it's not scripted, it's not rehearsed. I might write down a few notes and have some thoughts, but for the most part, you know, that's that's just kind of what comes out of my brain. And I don't do interviews all the time, just I do interviews for things, uh, people that um, I've maybe tried their products and I have a relationship with. So anyhow, so just to note um, about that. Because I had received the feedback and instead of doing it right away the next week, I had let it percolate, and now I feel I want to talk more about expectations because of some things that have happened with me in the past couple weeks that I think could probably relate to some of you out there. I hope so. My intent is always to relate to somebody and help them and add value to their life and to share. So these last couple weeks, I've really been working so hard. I've actually worked myself into a frenzy, to be real honest. I've been part of a coaching program since April. Coaches also need coaches, so I just think the coaching industry is amazing. And I have to say, the coaching program was great. I'm not being negative about it, but it did work me into a frenzy. And because I think I am so driven and so type A that when I was hearing the coaches' messages over and over and over that it just worked me into a frenzy. It worked me into this super high mode of expectations. And just hearing someone's message over and over, you know, all coaches kind of have the same message. I mean, if you listen to Tony Robbins, he consistently has the same message. And that's intentional. That's because building habits and is takes practice and repetition. So all of that is intentional and a good thing. And so this coach and his coaching program repeats the, a lot of the same things over and over to primarily, in my opinion, looking back, get people motivated, get people off their butts, get people to take action because you have to take the action. But because I am such an action taker, I really don't need someone in my ear telling me to take action. So anywho, I had a speaking gig this week and it went great. It, it was very good. Everything was fine. But I had built up in my head even more expectations as an outcome from it. And that's where I had to do some circling back the next day. And luckily for me, it only takes me like a, not even a full day to rebound from something. You know, whether it's something someone said to me that might be off color Um, you know, sometimes you get feedback, sometimes you have like an altercation with someone, you know, luckily for me, I don't stew on things. I'm very quick to bounce back. And that's something I'll close with. But, uh, it really sat with me for about a day and I had to really do a deep dive 
and to understand, you know, what was going on in my brain, what was happening that I left my event just not feeling like I thought I was going to feel. And I realized that it was a result of the program. And like I said, not in a bad way. It's just my own self-awareness was that I didn't need something so intent and I probably shouldn't have let it affect me the way it did. So my tool that I'm going to share this week to hopefully shed some light on where I'm going with this is taking some time to sit and think about yourself. Sit and think about your positive traits and also your negative traits. So you really become more defined in your own self-awareness. For example, I am a very direct person. I am not super wordy. People that are really wordy, I tend to have to really try hard to focus on. I'm I'm just more to the point and, you know, good or bad. But then that is something then that I need to be aware of when I'm working with someone or I've hired someone or I'm listening to something. I have to be aware of my expectations in relationship to how I am. Another example is that I am very compassionate. I definitely practice empathy. I've gotten better at that. I should put it like that. And I am a good listener. So then that feeds into my expectations of other people. And this is what I've had to draw a correlation with this this week after this um, event and then conversations that preceded the event with people. So if someone isn't a good listener and someone isn't compassionate or positive, kind of like a cheerleader in a way, then that conversation might not meet my expectations and might not have been good timing and a good place for that to happen. So the more you become aware of how you are, that will also give you the confidence to stand up for yourself in regards to your expectations. And another thing I realized was I shouldn't be looking to outside people to validate how I did. I'll get my own feedback. I'll, I'll get it. I'm going to get a video so I can learn. I always like to learn and do better. I hope you all have gathered that from listening to my podcast and my Instagram. So I'll gather that on my own. And if I need to ask for additional help, I will. There are sources out there for that, other coaches, and I'm I'm sure that I can easily find someone for that. But you should also just feel that, you know, you did a great job yourself. And what if you did everything you knew how to do, you crossed every T and dotted your I's and you weren't lazy in practicing, then you should feel like really good about that. So in my opinion, I did exceed my expectations. And it takes time. It takes time to figure out who can be in that camp and who just maybe isn't a good fit for that camp. And for example, I ended up having, oh gosh, three really intense, amazing conversations with my husband, Ryan, this week. And honestly, it brought tears to my eyes because he gets me. He understood He had been listening to what was going on for the past six months. And knowing me, he had a feeling that, you know, I was fine. Like I didn't need this extra level of of intense put on me. So now it's given me this confidence to really be like, you know, this is what I need. And I am going to stand up for what I need. And if I don't need this, I'm not going to do it. So I have to really embrace that. I started to embrace that whole feeling probably in my 30s when I realized that my thought processes came to fruition, my gut was right on people, on um, situations, business, lots of business things actually always was kind of the forefront when I started to realize things. And then when I got into my 40s, it just became more clear and more clear. And I think that's what happens when you grow up, (laughs) you become more mature and the years go by that you start to strengthen your confidence 
and you start to become aware of, you know, what works for you and what doesn't work for you. And all of that can feed into expectations. It can feed into expectations of people that you work with, friendships for sure, your spouse or partner, family members, you know, you start to get bolder and more confident to stand up for yourself. And if you realize that these are your qualities that you have or don't have, and it's what you want out of life, that can help you to manage your expectations. So again, the self-awareness is key. And the really the cherry on the top this week is part of the talk I gave on Wednesday was in regards to empathy, emotional intelligence, and mindfulness. And I have a saying in there where I say, self-improvement is impossible without self-awareness. So here I was giving a talk on this and mentioning self-awareness, and I truly came full circle with the whole thought process myself in regards also to expectations of people. There's a podcast I listened to this week with Cloris Kylie and Evan Carmichael. I mentioned it in my Instagram stories. And he, if you don't know who Evan Carmichael is, he is a really, really popular YouTuber who does an amazing job of doing the 10, um, let's say, tips, tools that really, really successful people use, their traits. I guess you can put it like that too. And he has a book. I actually ordered it. I haven't received it yet, but I ordered it. And he said the one underlying theme, the most common theme with all of these really successful people is that they are self-aware. So I'm going to leave you on that. My closing mantra this week is just to get in the habit. Well, I should put it this way. Just to have a very simple phrase that you can easily say and remember over and over to change your mindset. And that, you know, I'm always give quotes or different mantras. You know, does everyone remember all of those? Probably not, right? And that goes with anybody. But if you just can find and take hold of one simple phrase that will help you snap out of a negative energy mindset, or you keep going over and over in your head, something someone said to you or wrote to you or something that happened and you just can't escape it. Cause we all have those situations. Like I had this week, it took me a little less than a day, but I did get through it. Now I'm like, woohoo, everything, you know, back to normal. Right. So a lot of those, a lot of people, you know, need a longer period of time. So maybe if you can think of one phrase And I'm going to give a simple example, but obviously try to think of something that you um, can remember and that will resonate and work for you. But I say this really quickly, it just comes to my mind super quickly, and that is I am successful. So you can say I'm a successful business owner. I'm a successful speaker. I'm a successful writer. I'm a successful mother. You know, whatever success is for you, whatever you are aiming for and striving for and working towards, make that your mantra. But just something really simple like that is what I can use as a quick tool to snap out of a negative energy pattern repeating in my brain. So I hope that works for you. If you already have a tool and you'd love to share it with me, I'd appreciate that. I love to learn from other people. Maybe you know of something else that works for you. And if you don't have anything yet, I hope that that suggestion helps you think of something. Feel free to DM me on Instagram. Email me at melinda at melindavanfleet.com. And I'm also on LinkedIn. I hang out primarily on Instagram and LinkedIn. So would love to hear from you. If you love my podcast and found some value, I would really appreciate a review on Apple Podcasts, rating and review. And even more important than that, please share my podcast with a friend, family member, your spouse, partner. I just think it's so important to share and add value where you can. So I would love that. I'd love to hear from you and I'd love it if you shared. I would really appreciate that. So till next time, be grateful, be curious, always be learning, and you know what, have some fun too. Thanks for listening.